This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1842, The Importance of No, part one, by Chris Lovett of lessisprogress.com, and I'm Justin Mollick. Happy Saturday and happy Kwanzaa if you're celebrating. Welcome to one of the only podcasts in the world where blogs are narrated to you for free, with permission from the authors. It's an award-winning podcast, thanks to you. And today I have a bit of a longer post, so I'll read the first half today and then finish the rest for you tomorrow. So with that, let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. The Importance of No, Part 1, by Chris Lovett of lessisprogress.com. No is one of the most important skills you need at work right now. I've spoken to lots of people recently, and the majority of them are at some extreme level of busy. Maybe so busy that the word busy just doesn't really cut it anymore. Super busy has become the next stage of normal and the newest superhero that probably needs killing off. Stacked, up against it, chaos are more words I've heard recently to describe an individual's perceived situation. Sometimes people are so beat down that words no longer come out anymore and just a shake of the head and a deep breath is all they can muster as a response to the innocent, how's it all going? What this busyness and yes culture says to me is that a lot of us are really finding it difficult to say no at the moment. We've got accustomed to always playing catch up and wrestling with a million and one things to do. Maybe we've programmed ourselves to think that it's how we operate best or because everyone else is so busy, it would feel out of place for us not to be in the same boat. It's quickly becoming normal to be overwhelmed with stuff to do. And when you stop and think about it, that's not normal. I've heard of too many people reaching breaking point before their body, mind, or even partner forces them to stop. So why do we find using this tiny two-letter word such a difficult skill to perfect? Most of the time we feel a compulsion to say yes and accommodate wherever we can. Saying no to others makes us feel uncomfortable. It makes us get all squirmy and awkward. Generally, when someone asks us to do something, our default and instinctive response is to say yes or fit it in. Saying no stirs up intensely negative emotions, embarrassment, and guilt, says Vanessa Bones, professor of organizational behavior at Cornell University. In one of her recent studies, a group of people were each loaned a book from the library and then instructed to deface it. Half of the subjects recorded the fact that it felt wrong to do, but they went and did it anyway. It was later discovered that those who chose to deface the book found it so difficult to reject the person who had asked. They just couldn't refuse. William Urey in his book, The Power of a Positive No, Save the Deal, Save the Relationship, and Still Say No, suggests that the dilemma we can face in saying no often originates from, quote, an internal struggle between reinforcing our own sense of power or knowledge with a simultaneous desire to foster a relationship, end quote. So it may look like subconscious self-sabotage, but we're actually hardwired to agree to doing stuff, even though we may not want to or believe it's the right thing to do. Humans found considerable benefits being in groups, notably hunting and staying alive. Being in a group increased chances of survival with the ability to share resources, so we learned to adopt a sense that being agreeable to the group dynamic was good for us. Clearly it was. If you were not agreeable to the dynamic of the group, you were ostracized and excluded, therefore damaging your ability to obtain access to the required resources needed. So acceptance is seen as a survival mechanism, and therefore saying no to your boss makes us think we'll be perceived negatively and therefore excluded. This inability to say no can also come from our upbringing with parents and engagement with teachers. I very rarely said no to any of them, but when I did, it didn't go down too well. Chased up the stairs with a wooden spoon, given detention or lines. Back in the day, rarely said no to an authority figure. It would just be riddled with negative consequences. Plus, as we've grown up, we started to connect no with rejection and disappointment. The fear of getting a no from someone held you back from ever going to talk to them. Or was that just me? We now swerve projecting that feeling of rejection onto someone else by accommodating all sorts of requests. This is true in both our business and personal lives. The people pleaser within us also likes to create and sustain connections with others and anything that threatens to break that bond will cause us to worry. Saying no to joining a meeting, not helping someone when they have asked for it, or turning down that invitation creates a sense of panic. 
So in the end, we take the easy way out, the path of least resistance, and then before we know it, we've become buried under a huge pile of yes. Saying yes to something immediately removes any risk of conflict, which most of us will tend to do all we can to avoid, but the effects of that yes can cause severe long-term damage to us as individuals as well as in relationships and businesses. There's another thing to consider here also, our own desire to be seen to always be doing stuff. Busyness is becoming an addictive culture and so is the fear of missing out. There's still a large part of us that wants to be seen as in demand or needed, which raises our perceived level of importance. So as well as rescuing others and doing everything the boss has asked, we're also on the lookout for more so we can stay bang up to date with everything that is happening to everyone everywhere. God forbid we have spaces in our calendar. Let's put it another way. Maybe we don't even realize that we are saying yes to everything, but find it difficult to stop and think about the request that has just been presented. Maybe the yes is unspoken, and there's an assumption that you will just get on and do things, which has been part of the traditional workplace culture or a prominent part of a relationship. Maybe that's just how it's always been, and without disruption, that's how it will always be, despite your beliefs that it will all calm down soon. So. How do we get better at saying no? Hear that in tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled The Importance of No by Chris Lovett of lessisprogress.com. And I'll finish the rest for you in tomorrow's episode, but I'll keep this holiday episode short for today. Thank you for being here and listening every day, including the weekends and holidays. I'll be back tomorrow to finish up this post where optimal life awaits.